So good afternoon and welcome to, uh, I think this is part three of our webinar series looking at um, some comparisons and, and movement of Dynamics GP to Dynamics 365 Business Central in terms of ERP systems. So welcome to our webinar today. Uh, just some housekeeping notes. Everyone is muted on the call. Uh, we are going to open up for questions. Actually would really love to have uh, questions as we go. So if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to use the chat. A box and we will answer them. Um, if it's applicable in that section we're on, great. If not, we will get to them at the end and we'll certainly open up for questions at the end. Today we're really looking at comparing the cost of ownership, uh, Dynamics GP versus Dynamics 365 Business Central. And uh, wanted to hit our agenda for today. So we're gonna be looking at really two topics, implementation options. And what I wanna talk about there is just some broad implementation options that people need to consider uh, for ERP systems in general. And then the second big thing is really uh, cost evaluation. And there's a lot of variations between clients and how they're implemented. So what I really wanna do is just present some topics and some things that clients need to consider as they're looking at uh, different options for ERP implementation. So again, this is a, a three-part series. Um, so you can view the previous versions on our website and uh, also encourage you to sign up for the next couple in the series. I think we've got three more coming up and I'll bring that up at the end of the presentation. Just a couple of uh, you know, housekeeping things. The intention of this uh, webinar series is really to help educate our Dynamics GP clients. And I just wanna reiterate again, as we've, as we've done all along, GP isn't going away, GP is a great product. Um, the purpose of this series is really to educate our clients. We're getting a lot of questions from clients about cloud and what is the cloud and what is Dynamics 365 and all those sorts of questions. So we wanted to put a series together that would help answer a whole bunch of questions in a more organized format. Um, Secondly, as organizations think about the cloud and think about what options they have with an ERP system, I really encourage organizations to think through and identify specifically what your goals are for an ERP system. Um, understanding both in a short-term perspective as well as long-term, uh, what are your requirements? What are you trying to attain? Um, that will help an organization make proactive decisions and not just move to something because it's cool or it's interesting or, or whatever it might be. Um, and it will also help you plan ahead. So there are a lot of steps that organizations can take if you do want to move to the cloud um, that can get you there. And again, it just depends on what your overall arching goals are. So let's look at implementation options and, and to think through in terms of goals, you've got a lot of options. So um, let's talk through in a, in a broad sense what these are. Over on the left, we've got on-premise, um, an on-premise implementation, which is where probably most of our clients are in the, in the GP world. And what the larger implications of an on-premise uh, implementation are gonna be is that you are gonna be purchasing hardware and software, you're gonna be uh, dealing with maintenance of those types of systems in um, an on-premise system. Thinking through um, pros of an on-premise system and what a lot of people still like about an on-premise system is it's giving you uh, really total control of your system. So in terms of uh, system access and system maintenance and upgrade cycles and all that sort of stuff, you've got 100% control over uh, if and when those types of things happen. In terms of cons, uh, there is an initial cash outlay, uh, unless you're leasing your product or coming up with some other payment plans, you've got an initial cash expense. So for anybody that's running GP, you know, that's, those are already expenses that you've, um, that you've uh, taken care of. So that's not really an issue in terms of, let's say, ongoing maintenance, but in terms of on-premise solutions, that can be a con. Um, you do have uh, what I would say on an ongoing basis with an on-premise system is oftentimes incremental, ongoing, unplanned uh, cash issues. So if you think about uh, a hardware failure, you think about um, you've got some sort of error in the system that you need to do an update for, uh, oftentimes you can't plan for those. You also are gonna have a uh, larger um, incremental cash outlay. So if you've got even planned ones, if you're planning a hardware upgrade or if you're planning a hardware update, if you're planning a GP system upgrade, those are gonna be regular intervals of cash that you're gonna to have to deal with in terms of a con. 
Another con is you're going to really have to deal with full system management and maintenance. So if you talk about from a hardware perspective and from a software perspective, um, you're going to have to deal with updates and patches and all that sort of stuff. You certainly run the risk of outages. Um, and then if there is an outage, those have to be managed internally. So if you get an outage on a you know four o'clock on a Friday afternoon, yep, someone's going to have to stick around and take care of that. Other things to consider with an on-prem um, system is really the the ongoing costs of hardware and hardware maintenance. So uh, a lot of clients that I've worked with, when you start evaluating hardware, um, you know the the cloud question and the cloud discussion comes up when it's time to upgrade hardware, when it's time to you know deal with memory increases that are maybe needed on hardware, um, that type of thing. Other things to consider with an on-premise system is system maintenance and backups, and I'm often honest with clients when we when we talk about system maintenance and backups and, and really asking yourself if they're happening. You know, does your IT team have uh, a regular maintenance plan in place? Are they regularly applying uh, patches and updates to the database as well as the operating system that these systems are, these software systems are sitting on? Have you actually tested an upgrade? It's amazing uh, how many organizations say, yet yeah, we do we do a daily backup, we maybe do you know hourly transaction logs on our SQL server. Then you ask the next question of, well, when was the last time you actually tested that? Uh, that backup, the ability to restore, you know, does your team know how to do it? Can they do it quickly? Um, that sort of thing. So things to consider again with an on-premise system are those types of costs. You know, what would it cost you uh, if you're down for a day? Uh, what would it cost you if you lose a, a day of backup? Those are things you need to consider with an on-premise system. And then really the Dynamics GP system itself, um, you know, is it current? Is it, does it have patches on it? Does it have the latest updates? Uh, is it being upgraded on a regular basis? I'm going to guess that most of our clients are in that 18 to 24 month upgrade cycle. Very typical for clients. Um, but we do have those outliers that, you know, they haven't upgraded their system for three, four years. Uh, maybe they've opted out of maintenance. Um, you, you potentially are operating on an unsupported uh, application things to consider with an on-premise system. So there's this whole middle um, implementation option, which is hosted. And what you have here is um, IaaS, which is uh, infrastructure um, as a service. And then you also have platform as a service. So that's PaaS. And I'm gonna say these are a, a spectrum of services that are offered in this hosted um, in-between section. So you can host, let's say, um, uh, your GP system with dedicated hardware in an environment. So what that would be is taking uh, physical hardware, putting it into a hosted data center. Uh, it's just for use by your organization. You've got SQL Server, you've got Windows installed on it. You're still going to have to deal with maintenance and patches and updates, that sort of thing. Again, if you think about goals of your organization, if your goal is to eliminate on-premise hardware, this is certainly a first step an organization can take. Now, you have to think about um, maintenance and that sort of stuff that still has to happen with, uh, let's say, an infrastructure as a service option. But it's certainly an option for people. So pros there, you know, it's it's uh, removing hardware from my environment. I don't have to worry about the physical risks associated with managing the hardware. Uh, maybe I'm in a, a place that's dusty or dirty. I've worked with some manufacturing clients where that's really an issue. Um, you know, keeping the physical hardware clean, they're tired of dealing with it. Um, they don't want to invest in, let's say, air control systems around hardware. So, you know, put it all into a data center. It's taken care of. It's secured. Not an issue. Um, you know, you can move through sub server subscriptions, physical hardware subscriptions, software subscriptions versus purchase. Again, there's this whole middle ground of, of configuration options. What I see a, a lot of organizations doing is using this middle ground to maybe achieve some initial goals, but it's not all the way to, let's say, a cloud, a full SaaS offering, which is software as a service. So lots of options in the middle ground. We certainly can help you with uh, those types of options. On the far right, then, what you have is cloud offerings or SaaS. So this is software as a service. So that's different than the middle ground in the sense that I'm not buying any dedicated hardware. I'm not doing any maintenance on a database or an operating system. This is purely a subscription-based service um, that I'm that I'm subscribing to. Um, and again, in the in the model of Dynamics 365 Business Central, this is per user per month that I pay. 
and I don't have to deal with anything else. So I don't have to deal with hardware outages. I don't have to deal with upgrades. I don't have to deal with patches. I don't have to deal with system maintenance, uh, system backups, restorations, anything like that. This is just purely uh, a service that I pay for. A lot of pros when you start getting to this far right side is scalability. So Microsoft maintains all of the, the infrastructure behind the scenes. So what we're seeing right now with our clients that are going this route is if you have large sets of data, it doesn't matter. Microsoft just puts more resources at it, it's just taken care of. I don't have to worry about monitoring log files. I don't have to worry about, um, again, large data sets for reporting purposes. Microsoft is taking care of uh, the infrastructure needs to make the system completely usable. So scalability uh, is, a, is a big pro when you look at the far right side. Um, you know, some cons is system control. So if you're on the far left and you go, well, I want a, a physical piece of hardware that I can see and that I can shut off, that's your on-premise system. Um, you know, when you go to the cloud options, the, the system control that you have is certainly limited. Um, it just is, it's just not an option. I can't reboot the SQL server uh, because there's other people there. It's, it's an infrastructure system that just doesn't, um, you know, allow for that. Other things to consider is the level of customizations or integrations that an organization uh, currently has and what it would take to replicate those. So those are things to uh, consider in a cloud environment. So looking at pros and cons, uh, looking at the spectrum of, of options that clients have today has an impact on cost. So as you think about what an on-premise system costs you, what you have to, to pay to maintain it, to upgrade it, that sort of thing, what risks you have with an on-premise system, you put dollar values to that and then you go all the way to the cloud and, um, and look at the subscription-based system. So let's go to um, more specific cost considerations. I'm gonna bring up this first slide and what we're seeing is uh, a shift in, in how people think about costs. So in an on-premise system, you know, and again, there's some debate over what these numbers look like, but let's say there's a, a percentage that's dealing with licensing and then there's a percentage of your, of your on-premise costs that are dealing really with infrastructure maintenance, passages, all the stuff we've talked about. If you think about a, that maybe 25, 75% split of your total cost, that's kind of what you look at with on-premise costs. And it's more than just licensing. What we really need to be thinking about is the cost of the infrastructure, the cost of the maintenance, the IT resources, all that sort of stuff to, to get a full picture of what uh, a system actually costs you. When you move to a cloud environment, what you are gonna see is the licensing cost is gonna increase. So if you look at a per user uh, cost of a system over just from a purely licensing perspective now, over let's say a, a five year or 10 year uh, period, the cloud licensing on the surface of things is gonna be more expensive. But what we're seeing is that clients are getting um, much more definition and understanding around those hidden costs on the left are now being exposed. So I'm not gonna have infrastructure costs and maintenance costs and upgrade costs. What I've got then is more specific costs around consulting services, IT resources and training. So that's sort of the mix that you're gonna see. And um, clients really need to evaluate in their own environment, what is the total cost of ownership of an on-premise system compared to a cloud system? Um, to assume it's gonna be less expensive may or may not be true. The inverse is also the case. To assume it's gonna be more expensive may or may not be the case. You really need to do some uh, evaluation. So what I wanna do here is really to think about and to help people um, put a list together of the cost consideration. So what I would encourage you to do is take some notes. We're gonna send this PowerPoint out uh, later. I've just looked at the, the clients that have made a move to the systems, uh, to a cloud system. What cost considerations have they, have they looked at? So some of these may apply, you may have other ones, but at least this will give you a basis. If you think about a cost evaluation initial, you know, your initial software purchase is likely a sunk cost, um, but you've invested in that. You've invested in a SQL server, you've invested in Windows licensing, uh, you've invested in client access licenses for the SQL server. You could have peripheral report writers that you've uh, invested in. From a hardware perspective, you likely have got a, a dedicated SQL server. Um, you may have a remote access server, uh, you know, for our clients to access if it's, uh, well, just there's a whole host of options there, but most of our clients have got this remote access server. You could have dedicated hardware running management reporter, uh, that sort of thing. So you need to evaluate what are uh, my costs that have been associated with this project up front and, and what things do I need to start uh, looking at. 
then looking at what is my total cost of ownership on a on a yearly basis, uh, you know, on a three year basis, on a five year basis. Your annual software maintenance for your GP system is, you know, 16 to 20 percent, really just depending on uh, what sort of configuration you have. You need to think about your um, ISV annual maintenance, so the independent software vendors, if you've got any of those add-ons, you know, those are typically running an annual maintenance percentage of 18 to 25 percent, really varies based on what ISVs you're looking at. Um, you need to be thinking about server operating system and database maintenance. Now, I threw a number in here of 46 hours a month for internal IT support. You know, honestly, some of our, our clients have higher numbers than that. Some of them have lower numbers than that. If you're lower than four to six hours a month, I'd really be concerned um, to know is proper maintenance and backups and that sort of thing being done on the system. Um, those are questions to ask anyway, but think about what sort of IT uh, staff time am I dedicating to the system on a, on a monthly basis so that you can extrapolate that to a three, five year. Looking at a you know GP system upgrade, again, that typical upgrade cycle is 18 to 24 months. You wanna take advantage of new features and new functionality of the system and bug fixes and all that sort of stuff. You know, most of our clients do that 18 to 24 month. They may not be upgrading with every uh, available update, but you know you start getting two, three versions behind, and now you're going to get yourself in a bad spot. So, you know, putting an estimate together of that 18 to 20 more 24 month cycle, what is that going to cost you in terms of uh, consulting resources, in terms of internal resources, that sort of thing? Putting some sort of estimate together for hardware repairs and updates. You know, what what do you do if you've got a um, a uh, hard drive failure? What do you do with memory upgrades that are going to be needed? Uh, you know, is the life cycle of your hardware getting to the end? Is it, you know, five, six, seven years old? And you need to be thinking about upgrading hardware. So that needs to be part of the cost consideration. In terms of system backups and uh, backup testing, you know, what sort of time investment and dollar investment uh, do you have for your system backups? Is it going to tape? Does it go to offsite? Um, do I need to upgrade my tape backup system? Do I need to uh, make a larger investment into my backup offerings that goes off-site. You need to be thinking about those types of costs that uh, basically can be eliminated. I like the staffing question. Um, and again, to assume that you're going to save costs by moving to the cloud with staffing is really a question that you know, each client needs to ask on their own. You know, that, uh, are you actually going to be able to uh, reduce staff or not if you move to the cloud is, is really an honest question you have to ask. I think what we're seeing with most clients is they're able to redeploy those staffing hours uh, to other initiatives. So instead of maintaining, a, let's say, an on-premise GP system, when you move to the cloud, either in that hosted environment or to a full SaaS offering, you're able to redeploy those IT resources to something else within the organization. So I don't know that it would be a, necessarily a cost savings, but you probably can get other things done that weren't getting done before. In a hosted environment, essentially these are the same questions you need to ask. So even in a hosted environment, you need to be thinking about what sort of maintenance are you going to have to uh, pay for, what sort of upgrades are you going to have. Hardware repairs and, up and updates may be not an issue, but in some environments that actually could be an issue. The point with this, this hosted option is you really need to, to still consider uh, a great number of questions. Um, the other thing I always encourage people to do is to make sure you understand the cost structure of a hosted environment. Uh, each organization can have a different cost structure. If you've got physical hardware, if you've got uh, data in and out of that system, let's say it's a, it's a shared resource system, you could be charged for your data throughput. Um, on an annual basis. So you need to be thinking about and asking those questions so that you really understand what is it gonna cost in this middle ground hosted environment. Um, the other thing I really encourage clients to do is make sure you understand your system, the system maintenance policies of the hosted provider and make sure you understand backup policies. There are environments, let's say if you spin up an Azure server and you say, well, I'm gonna move my GP system to Azure. Well, that's great, except out of the box, there isn't a backup process that in, that's included with your Azure service. You need to make sure that those services get added to the infrastructure you're putting in place. So lots of questions you need to ask in a hosted environment, um, both to help you understand the costs that are involved, but what is it gonna cost you on an annual basis, on a three-year basis, um, and then things just to be considering in terms of system outages and that sort of thing.
All right, when you look at the cost evaluation with Dynamics 365 Business Central, uh, it's fairly straightforward. You've got a monthly charge per user per month. Um, in terms of budgeting, it makes it very easy. Uh, the little fourth bullet point there, just a caveat, there are discounts offered for current Dynamics users. So if you are a, uh, a user of Dynamics GP, you need to be current on your maintenance, uh, but there are discounts that are uh, that are offered against those uh, list prices for a period of time. So Microsoft continues to make some changes in there in terms of what that discount looks like and how long it is. So just want to encourage you to call us. We can help you through that. We can get you a real estimate of you know what are those monthly uh, licenses going to cost you. Uh, the other thing to consider is really your uh, potential app subscriptions then or what would have been ISVs. So if you think about fun functionality that may or may not exist in Business Central compared to GP, you know, you're going to have to evaluate, is that going to be an ISV I may have to purchase, uh, I may have to get a subscription for. But again, thinking about that in terms of your cost evaluation certainly uh, is a factor. Um, and then the other thing I just want to be transparent about is really uh, transitional costs. So Microsoft does provide some services that would port a GP system into Business Central, um, but at this point it's not 100%. So you need to think about uh, what are transition costs going to be in this process? So first one I like to be upfront about is Management Reporter does not is not supported with uh, Business Central. So um, you're going to have to think about uh, potentially rewriting reports. There are some utilities that we can talk you through, depending on uh, what parts of Management Reporter you've implemented. Um, we may have to think through those questions, particularly around report distribution. Um, functionality of the reports, let's say your rows, columns, and trees, that stuff all all there. But there could be areas of management reporting you need to think about. There certainly are implementation services involved in this project. Now, again, if you use the utility just to move your system over, they could be minimized. But um, clients that have made this move have wanted to do some maybe changes around process or or uh, really considering a chart of accounts redesign or data movements, that sort of thing. So could be implementation services. Um, at a varying degree uh, involved in this process. Certainly staff training. So you're gonna have to talk about, uh, you know, entering journal entries and creating customers and vendors and all that sort of stuff. Uh, there's gonna be training involved. Again, could be customizations and integration. So depending on what you've done with your GP system and, and what functionality you'd wanna add or customize in uh, Business Central, there could be costs around uh, customizations. And then integrations obviously would be um, an issue as well. So if you're, uh, migrating data into your GP system today or even sending records out of your GP system, uh, recreating those integrations or rethinking those is going to have to be done uh, as you move to a GP system as well. So broad sense, those are some cost considerations for your on-prem system, really getting an idea of what your total cost of ownership is for that on-prem system. If you're thinking about a hosted system, ask a lot of questions, uh, particularly around the cost structure. Uh, and then the, you know, the, the uh, SaaS offering is much more direct in terms of licensing fees, but you do have to consider uh, transition costs when you, um, when you go to that system as well. So um, at this point, um, certainly would love to, to field any questions. Uh, Carolyn's also on the line today. So if you've got uh, questions that maybe she can answer or I can answer, uh, we'd love to answer those questions while we're here on the, on the call this morning or this afternoon. Hi, Marcus. Sabrina here. Just had a question come in uh, wondering, are there any discounts available for current Dynamics GP users who are looking to move to Business Central or do they have to pay full price right up front? Nope, there are discounts for a period of time and you're going to get um, actually a fairly substantial discount off of that list price. So I just encourage clients to give us a call. Um, we can work through your specific uh, situation and give you uh, a, a discounted price, but it is going to be discounts off the, the list price. Great, thanks. And do you happen to know when the deadline is that they have to purchase to take advantage of that discount? I think at this point the discounts run to June of 2020, so it's th there's not an immediate, you know, uh, rush out and do anything. Great, thanks. 
while we wait for other questions that may be coming in, we can kind of talk about what's coming up next in the webinar series here. We have some more uh, additional information and topics that we're going to be covering in regards to moving to Business Central or questions that you might have about the cloud. Uh, I'll be sending a follow-up email after this event that will include links to register for these, so we hope you're able to uh, join us for one of these upcoming future webinars as well.